Hey everybody, welcome to Art Talk number six. This month, Julie Schumer and I are gonna review what happened. Um, this is what we do every month. It's kind of become our ritual. So let's start with you, Julie. Um, tell me about your month and how it went. Well, the month started out pretty well. Um, I had a couple of sales at a new gallery that I'm in in Santa Fe, which I thought was augured well, you know, for the future and for the summer season. And then I sort of got slammed against a wall. My 97-year-old mother had a stroke on May 9th, and she seemed to be okay at first, and she lingered for a little bit and then became unresponsive and passed away within a week of that stroke. And of course, I went to see her on Mother's Day, actually, and she died on May 16th. But, you know, the reason so why I want to talk about this is, number one, it's a, it's a seismic event in my life is now both of my parents have passed away, which is an odd feeling for sure. Um, but it's huge. It's, it's, it's huge. It's, it's huge. A, it's the biggest but, thing I think in most people's life. Yeah. I mean, and now I feel like an orphan in a way, you know, which is, yeah. you know, at my age is hard to feel that way. And she certainly was old enough to, to die and have us all be okay with that. Um, but she had an interesting life in that, she was a child prodigy pianist. She had a big debut at the age of 12 in a rented hall. And the sh this performance was broadcast on the radio. This is like 1937. Get out and then on the radio. Was, yeah, it was on the radio. Oh her, my God. her father rented this hall and a lot of people came. Apparently there's a program from it that we have. It was a big deal. Then she went to USC School of Music for a couple of years at, you know, for college and then I think she did two years there and then she went to New York by herself and studied with a colleague of Rachmaninoff of oh all God. things to be a concert grand you know a concert pianist right and ultimately she did not do that career she had met my dad who was a dashing air force uh, pilot in world war ii she'd met him on a blind date when she was at usc and they kind of had this long distance courtship which culminated in her bailing on the career and marrying him and, you know, living a life in the suburbs with two kids, you know, raising us and never really doing her heart's desire. She did it in a small way. She would, she gave piano lessons to kids in the afternoon, you know, children who probably could have cared less about playing the piano. <laughs> she um, accompanied choral groups she would give chamber music recitals in our house, and that was a huge big deal for her. But she didn't do the big thing, which was to do, pursue the career. And I asked her, I think on my last visit there, when I was recording her on my phone for posterity, mm -hmm. little I know posterity was around the corner. Yeah. And she said she didn't, she lacked the confidence to do it. She didn't think that she would make it. And there were no other women concert pianists around. So she felt that marriage and children were a better bet, you know, and I, but I know that she had regrets about that as anybody would after that. And I know that she was very happy when I ramped up my art career and went back to it. I think she lived vicariously through me on that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I can say I have my own regrets of not having left my day job soon enough. And I bet you would say the same thing, Pat. Yeah, no, I, um, well, I first want to speak for myself and the audience and send our deepest condolences to you and your family. Thank you. Um, you know, I talked with my husband about your mom. My husband is a classically trained accordionist and he's been a musician for more than 40 years. And I said, did you know that Julie's mom was a concert pianist in the 40s? And his reply was, there were no female mm -hmm. concert pianists in the 40s right. because they weren't allowed to play. Right. Um, it just, it was all male dominated mm -hmm. bullshit, you know, so sorry yeah. for the males in the audience, but that uh -huh. was, the, that was the time. And that was, it was unheard of for a female concert pianist. So um, I'm not sure that she would have even had that choice. Well, maybe she realized it was just going to be knocking her head against a wall to even try and do it. Yeah. But I know that she did feel that loss, you know, even in her later years, because she would speak 
so wistfully about the whole thing, you know, um, but what are you going to do? I mean, it's, it's what she chose and she had to ultimately make her peace with it. But I know that she was thrilled to death that I decided to, you know, go for it <laughs> in a way that she didn't have that opportunity, you know? Right. And how awesome that she was supportive mm-hmm. of your art career. I mean, we, oh, she was. we all have stories of parents who, you know, are like, you're doing what? <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, well, she wasn't supportive of it at the beginning. I mean, she she wanted me to, you know, to uh, be able to earn a living. And so my parents encouraged me to go to law school and pursue all that. But, you know, once I started painting again after a, a long absence, she was all for it. Oh, she thought that was great. That is fantastic. And now she didn't like my abstracts that much. And she was very free about telling me that <laughs> for the figurative series. But still... You know, she recognized that it was an achievement to do it and get them out there and sell them. And she was, you know, super proud about that. But and I think it helped take the sting a little bit out of her own sadness about not being able to have pursued this this pianist career. Well, you know, that's what regret is. It's a lot of sadness for what Mm -hmm. what didn't happen because you didn't take that step. And, you know, I I know I felt the same thing. I, I should have left my day job way, way sooner to pursue my career in art, but you know, it's hard. There's a lot of fear. Um, It feels very vulnerable to completely uh, change uh, from one thing to another, because you have to talk to everybody and explain Uh why you're doing it and how it's going to be great. And they're kind of like, uh, you're doing what, you know, it's just, (laughs) there's just not a lot of support necessarily because it can be such a 180. And a lot of people don't, you know, like our families and our friends may not really understand um, Mm -hmm. what artists do and how it's a, can be a super awesome, successful path. Right. Yeah. Um, well, so, it's been, uh, that's a hell of a month. I, I don't even a month. know what to say, but um, I'm really glad that uh, your mom and your dad gave uh, a, a wonderful set of genes to her da- yeah. their daughter. So right. you will carry the torch for her. I will definitely do that for sure. 